And the latest, greatest part of all of it is Jordan Poole got paid, uh, got the bag, as the kids say. The biggest takeaway from all of that, Chandler, is what? Um, I think it's that they they don't want to they want to extend this era of their dominance. They they are just they kind of pick their guy. They 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 didn't trade guys like um, the Duran trades when that was floating around. And there seemed like they're playing the long game. And this isn't this isn't a Bulls last dance thing where they're winning it and tearing it all down. I think they want to continue. And this kind of shows they're uh, you know they're 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 hedging their bet a little bit with plays injuries and, and having Jordan. This young aggressive score who's he's very entertaining and it's just kind of to me putting the drama of last week with him and Draymond and uh, you know in the past and the only uncertainty now is I don't know what this means for Draymond and Clay. Well, yeah, we're gonna have to get to all that and funny because we don't mention Clay as much as Draymond and what the future holds for both of them. But Eddie, I want to ask you: Do you think this extension would be as as lovely as it has turned out to be if it had not been for the punch heard around the world last week? <laughs> Well, Jordan earned that extension on the court, the actual game court, not the practice court. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, it makes it makes the timing a little funny, but you got him under the max for what he would have got. He's played better than just about everybody in this draft class. You have to resign him. He's the future of that team in many ways. Even uh, Steve Kerr was talking this week about how he wants him to focus on the defensive end as well because he wants to play him 30, 35 minutes a game when he can. So I, I think he's getting that bag either way. But yeah, if I'm his agent, I'm at the table saying, how about an extra, I don't know, two million like, for our troubles? <laughs> for his troubles. <laughs> for, my, for my troubles. Uh, Shams, look, the, these contract extensions, these negotiations, they are big, big things. There's a lot of money, a lot of agents, a lot of lawyers involved. How far back has this been in the works? It's been a minute. It's it's gone on a while. I mean, the fact that Jordan Poole and Andrew Wiggins have the same representation, that made it easier for the Warriors in a lot of ways to get a deal done. Um, but I, I would just look at it like this, like bigger picture. This is a results business. I think it's easy to say now that this could be the end of the but I, it, the way that I've heard it is if Draymond Green does have a big year this year, and if they do win, um, it, it's going to make for a very tough decision. And Wiggins signed a very team-friendly contract. That The four years... $109 million deal. He could have made in excess of $35 million on the open market is what executives were telling me. So he signs for a, a, just over $27 million a year. That is, in a lot of executives' eyes, a very tradable deal. And so he took a pay cut to stay. There's no question. And there is some value in Andrew Wiggins staying with the Warriors. He could have gone to probably other teams that aren't as successful, bad teams, next offseason. But he ended up staying with the Warriors. He likes what they built. Um, but listen, if the Warriors struggle this year and the production isn't there from Draymond Green, I would expect Bob Myers, um, uh, Draymond Green's agent, Rich Paul, to start working to see if there is a trade avenue possible. But until then, I think it's just going to be about how this team looks. It's 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 going to be results business. And if they win it again, I, I do think Joe Lacob is going to try to keep Draymond Green, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson around. But we'll see. Because I can't imagine Draymond would want to leave. And I don't know, unless things go completely awry, because that punch was obviously a moment. I know both sides have said they're over it. Jordan Poole has finally addressed it publicly, said he apologized. Now we, we're just all about winning championships. But really, the more I think about being punched in the face, the more I realize that's not something I don't think I could ever get over. Are they really over it, Chandler? I mean, can they be? I mean, listen, I think it's one thing if the video didn't come out, but I think that's something now that just just the overall embarrassment that comes with that. Um, you got to see this guy every single day. You're going to be heckled by every single road, uh, every at every <laughs> single road game moving forward. Uh, it was embarrassing. It is what it is, but I think they're, they, you know, they lessened the blow a little bit by giving them $140 million and considering sure. him a huge piece but yeah, I don't, I, I don't get over that so quickly. I, I really don't. So they've, we've heard both sides now from retired guys, from active guys. Either this happens all the time or it does not happen at all. So from your personal experience, have you ever seen a moment like that in practice anywhere? I've seen some mix-ups, you know, some, some, you know, talking and some pushing. And one time I saw a fight where there were actual punches thrown. And this, in this case, I don't know exactly what was said. I wasn't there. I don't know the buildup, um, but I've never seen a dude just drop a dude like that. No. No, dude dropping another dude is probably not best for team morale, but um, a guy that's we look to to lead everybody and who's been sort of quiet as far as we're concerned, but that's because this has monopolized everything is Steph. 
So Shams, what has his role been in all of this drama preseason? Steph Curry has been in the middle of everything. When you when you look at the Jordan Poole situation, his communication with Jordan Poole, from what I'm told, Steph Curry was a, really a guy that was consoling Jordan Poole during that situation, telling him, we have your back. This was not acceptable behavior by Draymond Green. And I think Steph Curry has had Draymond Green's back always, whenever there's been any issue that's arisen, whether it's his situation with Steve Kerr several years ago, his, his issue with Kevin Durant. You know, those, those two guys are attached at the hip. Jim Green is a vocal leader. Steph Curry is clearly the face of the franchise. Um, but I, I think Steph Curry really had to play overtime, and he he mended a lot of relationships. And now we'll see if this team can can re-energize themselves and refocus uh, and and really focus on the court and not on on kind of the off the court stuff. All right, t- time to put ourselves in uh, in the positions of Bob Myers and everybody else there. Bob Myers, uh, of course, being in charge of everybody. Draymond or Poole, Eddie. Who is more important to the team? I think going forward, you have to look at the age and the gap there. How could you not pick Jordan Poole in that sense? Yes, Draymond Green is integral to everything they've done the last decade, but they're looking at the next decade. Steph is 33. You know, they have to plan for after that. And yeah, he's still one of the best players in the league, but they want to continue to keep winning. They don't want this to end as Steph ages and they want to pass that baton. So right now it's Jordan Poole at that price with Draymond looking at a new contract soon as well. You have to gauge exactly what you're going to pay him. He has an option for $27 million for next year. Another thing you have to gauge and their massive tax bill, they have to put all that together. That's why the the point about Andrew Wiggins being so tradable is very interesting because there's no shortage of teams that are going to want a, a big wing who can defend everybody in the league and who can give you 25 points when needed in a finals game. So to me, that might be the more tradable piece than anything. Hmm. But if you're picking Poole or Draymond, yeah, you got to go with Jordan Poole right now. So Draymond's learning what every woman in television knows, that there's always someone younger and hotter that's just coming <laughs> right behind you. And it's not a great feeling. I get it. Uh, so Chandler, do you agree? Is this hands down? It's Jordan Poole at this point? Yeah, I mean, if you look over the years, though, though, that Warriors team, they struggle without Draymond Green, and he has been a critical, critical piece. He brings a lot of things. Um, I do think he's been blessed with the perfect situation playing with those guys the last 10 years. But, yeah, moving forward with the with the history of Clay's injuries, with Steph's injuries and Steph getting older, I, I think you got to go with the younger scoring guard that's, you know, going to put up those 30, 40-point games in the playoffs and um, kind of turn into that go-to guy when those other two guys are finally done. Okay, Shams, you mentioned the possibility of a trade, and that obviously opens up rumors galore. One of those was Draymond heading south to the Lakers. Any validity to that? I mean, the Lakers will have 35 million in cap space next summer. So if Draymond Green does opt out, they become a home. I think only time will tell. I think there's always been, you know, LeBron James, Draymond Green. We know the relationship. But what I, what I would look at is Draymond Green. I think he's getting a lot of slack right now. But I don't know. I don't. That Warriors team doesn't win last year without him. And I know he didn't have an amazing season, but he did play well in a couple of those playoff games. He guarded Nikola Jokic in the first round. Uh, really better than anyone. So there's a lot of value. There's a lot of stuff that goes outside of just the stat sheet with Draymond Green. And so only time will tell. This is a results business. And if Draymond Green is struggling this year, if the team is struggling, then that is something that we're going to be talking about moving forward. The drama. This is going to be must watch every night.